and we're not seeing anyone else in the waiting room. So we'll go ahead and start the uh, meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, my name is David Bloomberg and um, I'm the chair and the other voting associate members today here will be Maureen Scanlon and Bob Riddle, who's here by phone. And Carolyn Mish is here from the City of Northampton Office of Planning and Sustainability. Uh, notice of today's meeting was, whoops, I don't have publication dates on the notice. Uh, okay. Do you have the publication yep. dates, Carolyn? Yes, that, um, it was um, August um, 26th and September 2nd. Okay. Um, so notice of today's meeting was published on those dates. And we only have one item on the agenda, but before we get to that item, we always open with an opportunity for public comment. Um, and um, so I, I'll just ask, this, this is not for commenting on the application before us, which is 129 Riverbank Road in Northampton, but rather, is there anyone in the waiting room who's here just because they wanted to give some general public comment to the board. And if we don't see any hands going up, I'll move on. We don't see anybody, right, Carolyn? No, no. Um, so I'll just briefly explain the process here. First, I will invite the applicant or his representative to present the application briefly uh, with the opportunity to share the screen as well through Carol and Mish. Then we'll have questions from the board directed to the applicant or the representative. Then we can we will invite members of the public to comment by raising their hand in the bar at the bottom of the screen and waiting for me to recognize them or via phone by pressing star nine. Um, and then um, once public comment is over, the board can vote to close the hearing at which point we take we can take no more input from the public or from the applicant. And then we may uh, elect to hear a motion from a board member on, on the application before us. I would ask that any members, who, anyone who speaks, first identify yourself by name and address for the record that Carolyn is keeping. And also all questions should be directed to the board not to the applicant or to each other. Um, and if there are a lot of speakers, I'm not sure there will be, but I ask that you try to avoid repetition um, other than maybe to say you agree with what someone else said, um, just in the interest of time. Um, so we'll hear now uh, the application for the special permit submitted by Richard Watling concerning the expansion of a non-conforming setback at 129 Riverbank Road, Northampton Map ID 25-25. And uh, is the applicant or his representative ready to address the board? Absolutely, Mr. Chair. Uh, mm -hmm. But before I do, is there any need, uh, Carolyn, for a vote to open the public hearing? Or are we set to go? No, there's no vote to open. Okay, okay, I just wanted to make sure before I started talking. Uh, so R Ryan O'Hare of Bacon Wilson here in Northampton on behalf of the applicant, uh, Richard, Richard Watling. And Mr. Watling is here this evening by via Zoom. Now, first, uh, we want to acknowledge that this is a little bit of an unusual procedural posture for one of these cases to come to you and that Mr. Watling in fact, went ahead and began constructing a structure here without receiving prior permits and approvals. And that occurred back around the start of COVID. Uh, we are sorry for the practical difficulties that, that causes this board and its evaluations. And uh, as I'm sure we'll probably come up with some questioning, some attendant other issues as there are some other permits out there that I hope to address in turn. But you know, following that, uh, apology here. I do want to present the project as it stands today and the request that's being made and uh, show you why this is, we think, a really positive thing for Mr. Watling and his family and, in fact, for the neighborhood at large. So to that end, I, I would like to share my screen 
Uh, do I just do it, Carolyn? Yep, I made you co-host, so you can do that. Fantastic, thank you very much. So what you should be seeing here is on the left, a set of photos, and on the right, a set of plans. Are, are you able to see that? Uh, no, you haven't. I don't think you Oh, I didn't actually click share yet. That would, yeah. that would be <laughs> necessary. How about now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So starting with the plans here, this is a recent approval not required plan that was endorsed showing kind of the overall locus and a change that uh, does still need to be effectuated in these property lines that uh, certainly we would understand as a condition of approval or if the board wished to continue its action on this matter until such time as uh, there's some further information on that front. But taking that as a start, what we have here is the property at 129 Riverbank Road as it would be modified per this A&R plan. And right here you have an existing structure, which is this single family home. You can see on the right half of the picture here in the left. That's Mr. Watling's home, lives there with his family, wife, kids, and that family's growing, which is why to enable them to stay at this location, at this property, they've sought this expansion, which you can see partially constructed on the left here. On the plan, as indicated, there's a second floor connecting bridge. That's right here and then a garage area on the first floor and some residential living space, two bedrooms and a family room type area upstairs. You will see that both, certainly before this A&R plan, the existing structure was a non-conforming dimensional structure relative to the side setback between this and the abrut abutting easterly property. Uh, you then have, and the reason we're here applying for this special permit is a expansion of the nonconformity insofar as this new garage and family living area now encroaches into the 20 foot setback from the rear lot line. That 20 foot encroachment and that rear lot line is occupied, or excuse me, I should, let me rephrase that. The abutting property to the rear is owned by Mr. Watling's aunt. It's my understanding that she's here today at this public hearing. She certainly can speak for herself in the public comment portion, but it's my client's understanding that she has no opposition to this, to this change. And she is certainly the property most impacted by this encroachment, or not encroachment rather, but by this move into the setback. Uh, what I'd like to do now is just kind of scroll through these pictures, which again, understanding this is an unusual posture, show you in a very real way what this expansion looks like and how it's situated. You, you see here from the side view, looking across what is a shared right of way and driveway that comes across the property here and services some of the back properties. You can see the side of Mr. Watling's home as it exists and the proposed addition that is largely in the obviously unfinished but the uh, size and location that that would actually be. Moving down here to look at it from some different angles, it's a little closer up. This back here is Mr. Watling's aunt's house uh, as just referenced. This is obviously the garage that driveway is referenced. Side view, this is really the same, same picture. Now in this view, looking from over on this side towards the house. And then finally, looking from the street as it would look going back in. And this view looking from along the side out towards the river. So Mr. Watling thinks this is, it, it, let me back up a little. The standard for whether the board can or should issue this special permit in intensifying a nonconformity is whether the change would result would be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. And it's Mr. Watling's position that not only is this change not more detrimental, it's, it enhances this neighborhood. And it does that by certainly, you know, he's consulted, this has not been some slap together project. This has been done with thoughtful consideration to maintaining the architectural themes that exist in that neighborhood in trying to match the, the bulk and, and layout of his home 
and trying to make sure that it feels an extension of what's going on. When you look at where it's situated on the property, what you'll see, and you can kind of, in my opinion, see this from the plan, uh, if you went down there yourselves as I drove by this afternoon and observed it, I think you'd see it in a very tangible way, is despite the size of, of this addition, it is in many ways hidden, not hidden, but in a kind of spot here where it's not really obtrusive looking at it from the road. It's not really blocking any view that previously existed because as you can see from the rear house, previous, it only blocks an area that previously was a view of the back of Mr. Watling's home. From this house, it only blocks a developed area. There's some tree growth in there already and then further structures that way. And similarly, looking from this direction in. Uh, it, the nature of how this is gonna be used, this is Mr. Watling's family home. As I said, it's a growing family. This is an expansion intended to enable that family to keep living here and as they grow. But this is where they plan on staying. This is a single family use. In no way does this expansion change or alteration or the nonconformity in lot line and setback uh, nonconformities that result in create any sort of nuisance traffic. Doesn't create any further sort of noise, any further light pollution, anything like that that wouldn't have already been there because it's not changing the use at all. Further, by having this garage now, where previously there was just a shed, it enables Mr. Watling and his family to park their vehicles, to store the kids' toys you saw in some of these pictures, everything like that in a garage and out of this common driveway, right of way, what have you here that services multiple properties. If anything, it, it enables and enhances the neighbor's ability to access this area and it enables and enhances public safety in the sense that vehicles that perhaps previously would have been pushed out into parking on Riverbank Road, now from the trickle down effect of these vehicles going into a garage, don't end up there. Now, I wanna to touch on some aspects of this that still require further permitting. As already mentioned, there is this a &R plan that was approved that would need to be effectuated. And Mr. Watling would certainly need to, in fact, record whatever instruments are necessary to have control over that and, and effectuate the a &R. Before this permit that we're seeking authorizing the expansion of the nonconformity could ever be issued or utilized, I should say. There is also the issue that this property is within the 200 foot buffer zone around the, the Connecticut River. And Mr. Watling understands that he needs to go to the Conservation Commission and obtain approvals. Uh, those have not been obtained yet. Certainly we would be amenable to those as a condition of approval uh, of obtaining the necessary Conservation Commission or other approvals. Or again, if this is something the board feels it would want or need further information on, we would be happy to continue this public hearing, explore exactly what would be required, pursue that process, and come revisit the issue at a, at a further date. There is an unrelated issue uh, on a proper area of property about down here, it has nothing to do with this project whatsoever. Uh, on behalf of a neighbor who does own the property down here, it's not Mr. Watling's land, he did do some clearing of invasive vines and remove two dead trees that has resulted in some CONCOM enforcement action against that neighbor. Uh, it's our position that's totally unrelated to this property. However, Mr. Watling, of course, intends to address that appropriately as well. So from our perspective, this is a beneficial thing for Mr. Watling's family. It's in compliance with the spirit of the zoning and the reason these special permits exist. It's of a gross benefit to the neighborhood without causing any sort of detriment from Mr. Watling's perspective. And for those reasons, we would ask that the board find that it will not cause substantially more detriment to the neighborhood and approve the special permit. I'm happy to answer any questions the board may have uh, or any questions members of the public may have for us through the board. And with that, I'll, I'll turn it back over to the board. Thank you very much for your time and consideration this evening. Thank you. Um... I'm trying to stop screen sharing. <laughs> Maybe Carolyn can do that for me. Uh, uh, any questions from board members? Um, so this still has to 
go up before the uh, Conservation Commission, right? Yes. And um, does what does the ANR have to do with this? Well, they have to get an additional slice of land along one side, the right side facing it from the street. And I assume Attorney O'Hara, that's to eliminate the nonconformity along that side? Well, it does serve the purpose of eliminating that nonconformity, but my understanding is that that actually is for the purpose of avoiding an issue that otherwise would exist with open space requirements. Oh, oh, so, so open space, minimum open space requirements. Carolyn, okay. that's that's you can confirm that, Carolyn, that that's the reason they need that other piece, which means <clears throat> if yeah. they did approve this, it would have to be contingent upon the Getting recording that. of the ANR plan and the and the transfer of title to that parcel called uh, Parcel A, six hundred fifty-two square feet from the abutter to the, the right, which is sort of the Northeast and to the applicant, correct, Carolyn? Correct, they, um, they, by adding the amount of structure to the property um, that, um, that created um, a non-conformity for open space. So that had the only way to, um, correct for that would be to acquire additional land and add it to the property to make the property larger in order to allow the increased lot coverage that the structure created um, <laughs> or the addition created. So that's why it's important that the land actually transfer that it's not just shown on the paper, but actually right. the entire parcel is bigger right. because the board doesn't have the jurisdiction to grant um, under a special permit um, that because they had, they were conforming for open space, it would be a variance otherwise. Right, so so our options would be, well, one, to deny the application, but two, to grant it subject to the condition that the ANR plan is not only recorded, but the transfer of fee simple title is effectuated for a parcel A from the abutter to the Northeast to Mr. Watling, um, or uh, to continue the hearing and, and wait to make a decision until the applicant can come back with proof of the recording of the deed effectuating that transfer. But I take it that we could the, the applicant couldn't get a sliver of land on the rear of the parcel um, from the abutter, his relative, who's the abutter to the rear because that would make her house non-conforming, that would create a non-conformity for setback purposes with her house? It's already a non-conformity. You can see the oh. structure is very close so It would close increase, it would increase the non-conformity of, yeah. of her property, the, the setback right. violation on her property. There are only so, maybe less than 10 feet between the structures. Right. So, so, so that wasn't really an option to try to eliminate or reduce the non-conformant, the, the encroachment and the setback on the rear side of the new garage. Um, and I was curious, Carolyn, have, have you, um, I haven't seen any memos or emails or letters from abutters or anyone else before we open it up to the public? We have not received any um, letters at, at all. And what about DPW? Any comments from DPW or concerns? Um, they don't have any concerns about this structure on this parcel. Um, no. And then okay. the only other piece is just as a, you know, reminder, they uh, obviously mentioned that they've done things out of order, um, that <coughs> the board should really review, despite the, you know, the violations of um, working without permits and the violation of the cease and desist order. Um, that you look at it as though it's not been done. So either way, you know, if you're, you're going to deny it, you, you have to sort of forget the fact that it's there. And if you want to approve it, you forget the fact that it's there. You're just looking at it as though it's just on plan. Right. In other words, is it accurate to say that 
in making our decision, we should not be influenced by a bias resulting from the fact that the applicant undertook this construction without proper permitting. Right now, what he's trying to do is fix the problem. Correct. Okay. And we're just looking at, at this as if this garage hadn't been built yet in Correct. evaluating whether we think the proposed and quote unquote improvements um, <clears throat> would be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, have we, and maybe I'll ask, cause I'm, I, it seems like the other most affected property owner would be maybe Mr. Mello, if he's still the owner of property at 135 Riverbank Road. Actually, I have a question, David, I'd like sure. to ask. Go ahead. Are you considering opening it up? That's why I just butted in. Sorry about that. No, I was going to ask the applicant if he's heard from Mr. Mello, but. Uh, Mr. Um, Mello is here in the room. Oh, he's here. Okay, good. Yep. So we'll hear yep. from him. Thank you. We'll hear from him. Go ahead. Go ahead, Maureen. Um, I just have a question. The plan we originally received was only two story. And I see that there's that partial third story. And I'd like to just check the height. Are we still within the proper height? Where does that come in? I can answer that. I can answer that question, Ms. Great. It's exactly 35 feet, which is, I believe, or it's exactly the height requirement. Uh, so that's it, maximum. All right. It is. And I and to answer kind of the nested question that Mr. Bloomberg had about whether the applicant had heard from Mr. Mello, my understanding is that Mr. Watling knows Mr. <laughs> Mello objects to the height of that third floor, but it's our position that's not at all a, a nonconformity with this parcel. It's within the it's within the dimensional regulations. Okay, it may be within the dimensional regulations, but it's part of the proposed project, quote unquote. And I believe we're looking at the entire proposed project and making our determination as to whether we think it would be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. I believe I'm stating that correctly. But, but your point, Attorney O'Hara, is that it is, uh, it is allowed as of right, at least in so far as the height restriction has not been violated. That's right? exactly what I'd say. And then just to the more salient point, I don't think, and from the applicant's perspective, this cupola, if you want to call it that, or it's almost like a widow's walk enclosed, in any way is more detrimental to the neighborhood than the, the addition at large, which is itself, as we've you know, stated, we believe is not at all detrimental to the neighborhood. Right. Okay. I will hear, if Mr. Mello's here, we'll hear from him in a minute. Um, any other questions and from board Carol in the Yeah, Carolyn, the only other setbacks are resolved. Uh, I mean, we're addressing the rear setback. That's why we're all here today. The side setback is actually gonna be remedied by, even though it was, uh, pre-existing, it was going to be expanded, but that's not going to happen because he's buying that parcel. The front setback is non-conforming fairly significantly, but that's pre-existing too, right? So there's that's not a question. That's not a factor I mean, here. The, the, it's the only the factor, it's only a factor in that it allows this project to even come before you for a special permit. So if there have been no non-conforming setbacks, there would be no way to create this expansion all the way to the rear of the property. But because the property is already non-conforming, including uh, it was originally the side and the front, now it's just the front. That's what allows it to move forward as a special permit. Okay, so otherwise it would not be even on the table just based on what's allowed in that, in that district for setbacks, right? Thank you. Uh, Carolyn, what, does this touch on the issue that was raised at the last hearing and on another matter that the non-conforming structure is the existing building in front? Yeah. Um, and it's exactly the same section yeah. of code that you were considering, considering two weeks ago at the hearing. And an argument was made then that because the structure that's being altered or expanded is not the specific existing structure that is non-conforming. The word structure appears in the singular in the ordinance. And this would only 
and I'm just just we're trying to remember an argument that was made at the other mm -hmm. hearing. Yeah, I think the argument was made that because the um, the structure and consideration was not the one that was currently non-conforming, that it couldn't be wrapped into the consideration of the overall piece. But this is an addition to the existing structure that is non-conforming. Oh, that's right. It's attached or will be mm -hmm. quote, quote, yeah. attached to it. And okay. if it did okay. not have residential use, the setbacks would only be determined based on it being simply a garage, right? No, anytime you attach a workshop space or garage, then ah, it becomes the okay. whole and we look Got at it. it as, yeah. Although if, if just the applicant had a thought on this and I didn't present it, but just one thought is if it were detached <laughs> and a garage, then and even a garage in the same dimensions taking away the attachment as this, structure currently is up even up to 35 feet that in our understanding as a detached accessory structure would be allowed as of as of right so there is a structure from the applicant's perspective that could go here that would look a lot like this that would be detached that would be as of right as accessory but um actually just to clarify a detached accessory structure can be closer to the lot line it could be four feet but it can't be 35 feet tall and it can't have a residential component. Right, no, I was just talking if it were just a garage and I understand yeah. there are different height limitations, yeah. I apologize. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> any other questions from board members? And it, No, I'm fine. Okay. And if, Maureen, any, anything else? No, for I'm now? all set, yeah. Obviously, obviously we reserve our rights to uh, ask more questions, um, but if the applicant doesn't have anything else for now, the applicant and his representative also will have the right to respond to any comments. Um, I guess I'll open it up to uh, people uh, who are here from the public to comment on this application. Um, Carolyn, how, what's the best way to do this? Um, well, I don't, if I don't see any raised hands. Oh, here, right. People, um, people would have to raise their hands if, if they yes. could indicate that they would like to address it. Sometimes people are here just to gather information and no one should feel pressured to talk. <clears throat> um, there is one person uh, with a Galaxy Note 9 that would like to say something it looks like. So, okay. um, yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah, my Hi. name's uh, John Citro. I live at uh, 86 Riverbank Road. I'm Richard's um, one of his abutters. And I just want to say I have no problem what he's doing. I don't think it's a <laughs> eyesore. I think he did a good job what he did, and it looks pretty good. And uh, I just wanted to let you know, I, you know, he, it's in vision of my house. So I'm just letting you know I have no problem with it. Thank you. Uh, All right. Any Okay, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Any, anyone else from the public who would like to address this? I don't see any other hands. Okay. <clears throat> um, okay. So I'm, I'm, I guess I'm not gonna, I guess if I see another abutter's name here, but I, but I don't see that he's he's asking to speak. So we'll move on. Um, so um, I guess I'll ask the board. Oh, there's one it, more hand raised. Okay, who's that? It's called a Zoom user. Carolyn, are you able to? Um, I. Um, the person who has yes, their hand raised. Yeah. Oh, yep. I hear I hear him now. Yep. Yes. Hi. Uh, my name is Dave Fournier, 131 Riverbank Road. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife, Melanie, is uh, Richard's aunt. Uh, so we have the uh, home behind the garage as shown in the picture. Um, mm -hmm. We also don't have any issues with uh, what he's doing. I think it's uh, a, a very nice looking building. Um, and um, as far as it being close to, you know, our property line, 
Uh, you talked about that 20 foot uh, buffer or whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, we have no issues with that also, so. Okay, good, thank you, appreciate that. Thank well, you. Anyone else? Um, seeing no other hands raised, I guess I'll ask the board, do we feel like we have enough information both from the applicant, his representative and the public um, to close the public hearing, which would take a motion, um, after which we're not able to hear anything more from the applicant, <laughs> from anyone else. Um, um, I'll, what make, are we I'll make a motion. I'll make the motion that we close the public hearing. Okay, so I'll, do we have a second? I'll second. I'll second okay, that. and since we're virtual, we have to have a roll call vote called taken by Carolyn. Uh, Maureen Scanlon. Uh, yes. Bob Riddle. Yes. And David Bloomberg. Yes, so that's unanimous. So the public hearing is closed. People are welcome to stay and listen to the, the continuing discussion. Um, I guess the question is, um, are we ready for a motion on the application? I have some questions. I would like sure. to discuss it. Do we do that before the next motion? Probably, oh, right? we, could, we could do that, sure. Yeah. Um, just looking at, um, Here's my, here are my considerations. Um, the uh, building I think is very nicely done. Um, the distance from the property behind is of concern to me in spite of the proximity, in spite of um, the family connection because our consideration should be uh, you know, future thinking, not simply based on who owns the properties now. And so that it is, um, it ties into, as I, you know, just refreshing my familiarity with zoning code for special permits, I see that uh, two criteria need to be met. And one is, and I'm looking at, um, let's see, yes, I did, did a little bit of looking into this, 10-1, uh, C, where all the following criteria must be met for a special permit. Mm -hmm. And the first one is the requested use protects adjoining premises against seriously detrimental uses. If applicable, this shall include provision for surface water drainage, sound and sight buffers and preservation of views, light and air. And the preservation of views is one I, I want us to consider. Uh, because it certainly does impact riverfront views from that second unit. And if our deliberations and our decisions should be based on uh, that as a separate piece of property, I think that's something we should, uh, th that's the one that I think is, is important for us to take into account. And there was one more that is more subjective in my opinion. And that's number three, which is the requested use will promote a harmonious relationship of structures and open spaces to the natural landscape, existing buildings and other community assets. Uh, I think the open space in between that building and our applicants building was a very sort of nice space that permitted uh, interaction with the street and with the river. And again, that's more subjective, but the other um, consideration I would like us to just um, ponder. When you said uh, the other unit with respect to- I'm talking uh, about 131, the property owned by um, his aunt. And they spoke They spoke this evening at, yeah, 131 Riverbank. Oh. On the uh, on the drawing here, it, it is listed as 129B. 129B is actually 131. If you're looking right. at the uh, okay, yeah, yeah, but it's 30. not it's not like it it would I wouldn't even be considering this if you owned both lots and we aren't actually supposed to be you know having a discussion amongst the um, 
you know, uh, across the room right now, but it is a separately owned piece of property, meaning it would at some point land in other people's hands, another buyer. And uh, we are responsible for looking to not just the present, but the future. Yeah, I, my reaction to that, Maureen, is we are, if, if we are, it's in a very limited sense, because first of all, anyone buying it in the future is going to know what they're buying. <laughs> Um, and they're going to they're going to be buying it with this existing structure in place at 129A. Um, so it's not like they're going to be surprised. Um, they're going to be choosing to buy. It might affect the value of the property at 131, but but that's not something we get involved in. Um, and and so I agree with you that that we have to have a broad take on this. But all we have before us right now is the current owners who obviously have no objection. Um, and I assume they would have taken into account in deciding whether or not they object the, the idea that when they resell 131 or 129B, mm -hmm. um, it could affect the value of the home. Now, granted, they're related, so they're not exactly unbiased, but but I don't I don't know that one, we want to get too far down into the weeds, in my just personal opinion, um, about the fact that there's a bias because they're related, mm -hmm. but also about projecting into the future, trying to protect the interests of future owners of 129B. Um, that's just my take. I mean, I, you, you know, reasonable people can have different opinions on this point, but um, because otherwise, I think what we're supposed to be thinking of or evaluating is the how detrimental is the impact today, currently. Um, and I actually put quite a bit of weight on the fact that we haven't heard, actually heard from anyone who's objecting to this. So even though this isn't a democracy in terms of if a lot of people object, we have to say we won't do it. Or if no one objects, we have to say we will do it. Um, there's some correlation in my mind to the question of how detrimental is this on the neighborhood with the opinions of the people who are actually in the neighborhood. Again, sometimes there's gonna be a divergence there, but, yeah. but I haven't heard anyone objecting, including the owner of 129B. And, um, and I think it's a slippery slope to say, we have to think about the future, how far into the future. You know, right. And I, I guess, David, I, um, this is why I, I'm discussing it because yeah. I look at the, um, I look at the, the language of the uh, ordinance, the beginning of, of the, the general definitions of, co of the ordinance, which says words used in the present tense include the future. I, we are in fact, um, asked with considering anything we do in the present, um, indicating meaning this, uh, we're considering the future. Is, is that, Carolyn, is that a yeah, valid I'm interpretation? In, yeah, I'm interested in Carolyn's reaction because it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting point that, that I don't think we've ever discussed before, but it's a good point. Well, Carolyn, do you have any and, input? And I'll just, one yeah. more extension of that is that, I mean, I, I value our zoning ordinances very much. They're what we go from, right? They're what we go by. And right. so I want to uh, honor the integrity of that, but also understand its perspective in relation to individual appeals like this. Yeah, so, no, really good question. Caroline, do you have any thoughts on this? Um, well, you know, I think that it's important to think uh, I think you're right, Maureen, to, to highlight those um, criteria in the special permit um, section. And I think, yes, you're, you uh, sort of everything that zoning and the planning office does is sort of to set the stage for what we want the community to be going forward. You know, it's not just supposed to be reactionary or uh, allowing one person to do one thing and another person to do another. 
um, but to sort of think about it in the whole context of community. But, uh, or I guess I should say not but, but in addition, um, I think those are good things to evaluate in the context of whether or not you think this is substantially more detrimental to the whole neighborhood. So that, so you can think about the, um, mm -hmm you know, the impacts to the um, open space um, or the um, proximity, you know, preservations of views, light and air um, in that context and, and, but, and in incorporating sort of the, the other pieces of the puzzle in terms of comments you're hearing from the neighborhood or not hearing from the neighborhood. You know, if um, the folks who are living in that neighborhood are saying, you know, this is not a, um, affecting us in a way that limits our, you know, views light and air, for example, uh, maybe that's a cue to say, okay, Hello. looking sort of at the bigger picture, um, um, you can sort of think about that, but also evaluate it in, in looking at the whole neighborhood and what people are saying about it and helping you sort of think through whether or not this is an issue. I don't know if that helps at all. And I guess I would also say that I think um, to David's point that the other piece of it is future owners um, who may not be related to the current owners would be seeing this in the context that exists, right? So they would um, they would um, make that decision about whether they want to whether there's such mm -hmm. a big impact that they want to live there or not, and so it wouldn't be a surprise, you know. One of the other things that I'm thinking about is this issue of, I mean, this can't happen until the transfer of the property next door is completed to ensure compliance with open space requirements. And so we could continue the hearing um, until I think we have another meeting on the 28th. To give you the already applicant. closed the hearing, so you can't. Oh, continue we can't continue. Yeah. Okay, got it. Okay, but we can make it a con we can certainly have a condition that yes. even that there's a limited period of time that our our decision is void if if the uh, transfer as shown in the NR is not um, completed within a period of time. Correct. Right. The the applicant uh, stated earlier that they were willing to continue to another time uh, to, to the 28th. That was the uh, attorney. Right, but Carolyn, we, because we've closed the public hearing, we're prohibited from continuing it, even if it's just to delay our vote. I hadn't realized that, yeah. Well, yeah, so let me just be clear. You, um, you can, you don't have to vote tonight. You right. can put the vote off, but you can't take right. any new information. Right. No, so, I think that's what we'd be yeah. talking about, yeah. just okay. putting the vote off. But but the fact is, because it's a special permit, we need a unanimous vote. Correct. Um, and I'm inclined for the benefit of, unless there's an objection from board members, for the benefit of the applicant to sort of canvas the board. <laughs> um, I mean, I'll say that I'm- See, I, I'm I don't- Go ahead. I Bob. don't have a problem with. I don't have a problem with the uh, with the proposal on the right. condition that um, that the ANR, you know, that there's a transfer of property and that they meet the requirements of the uh, conservation commission. Right, and I I feel the same way, Mar Maureen. I don't know if you're ready to to state a position. <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot, but I just thought um, it it's would okay. be It's okay. It's what it's yeah. right. It's what we do. Um, yeah. I, 
you know, philosophically, it, I struggle with going from what was a 30 foot setback to uh, what's going to be a three foot something setback. But um, I think it's a 20 foot, if that helps. <laughs> right. It had been. It's a 20 foot. That's the, oh, that's I see the what requirement is 20 foot. Right. So going from a 30 foot to a three um, something foot setback, which is a major change in setback. And a point that we're not supposed to factor in is that it's already done um, with the awareness that it should have gone through permitting. That said, the proximity of his house to the one house that I think it is significantly detrimental to is his fam is family. And so I'm leaning towards okaying it, even though there are factors here that are not ideal for me. Mm -hmm. That's I'm being as kind of honest as I can be. You know, I, I, I see that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, I'm assuming that if we continue to the 28th, as, as, as even suggested in passing by the applicant, that that should be enough time for them to, uh, to co complete the property transfer. So uh, on that front, if I may, and I, I don't, I'm certainly not looking to introduce any new facts or any argument, that may take significantly longer, as may the Conservation Commission uh, notice of intent process and, and require obtaining whatever approvals may be required. And it would be the applicant's request that if you are inclined to grant this special permit, that it just be conditioned that it that it may not be be utilized until the applicant furnishes this board with, with dem demonstrated proof that those approvals have been required, uh, excuse me, the approvals have been obtained from the Conservation Commission yeah. and the well, transfer sure has in fact occurred, but that timeline would make it very difficult for the applicant to, to okay. do. All right, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I, the con I'm not as worried about Conservation oh. Commission because you have to comply with that no matter what. Um, but I mean, we could, we could have, I, we could, you know, we could give 60 days. Uh, I'd like to have some drop end date so that this isn't just hanging out there forever. Um, Can I just make a point? Um, yeah, go ahead. So I don't think it would be appropriate to have a condition that this is conditioned on Conservation Commission permitting mm -hmm. because you're right, two right. separate boards. Exactly, um, that they I, do their things separately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, however, the condition that the land transfer, I mean, that they really should have the land before they even come for permitting, and they don't. I don't see how that would need to take 60 days. I mean, the ANR has been signed, it's ready to go. Um, so if they can't, you know, if they can't complete the land transfer within 30 days, then you know, you could also put a condition on the permit that says it has to be done within 30 days rather than waiting for all these other permits to happen. So, uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's possible they don't want to do the transfer until they have all the other permits in place because if, if, if for all we know, their money's being paid for that strip of land, but that's speculation and we don't really need to get into that either. Um, so, um, and by the way, if we delay to the 28th, that gives them that much more time. Um, before we, oh, I see. I, I guess there's no point in delaying to the 28th if we're being told that there's no way they're going to be able to complete this transfer by the 28th. Um, well, I mean, I'm inclined to say, is there any scenario, Carolyn, where if we issue a decision tonight saying they have 30 days to complete the transfer or this uh, uh, permit? is not that we're granting us null and void. Is there any mechanism for them to come back and ask us to reopen that? Well, that sure, they could amend the permit, they could appeal the permit. Um, but I think, you know, under other circumstances, there might be a case in which you could say, you can't seek a building permit until you've recorded the land transfer. But in this scenario, they built anyway without a building permit. So you don't have that same kind of check that you normally would have with applicants. So they're already so far down the road that I don't think that it makes sense to say prior to issuance of the building permit, 
because they've already started construction. Oh, was there a so cease that's and why this, was there a cease and desist here, Carolyn, from the building inspector? There was, and there's been a violation of that and a notice of violation sent that has not been responded to. So, you know, I just don't think that's been an effective tool to use. Um, so I think that, that that's concerned. why I'm suggesting, that's why I'm suggesting a timeline to for the recording. And if they can't meet it, then they'd have to come back for another permit at such time that they do have the land in hand. So what's an appropriate well, one time thing we span? Could do in, well, or, or Maureen, I, I, in response to the question I thought you were going to ask, Maureen, <laughs> we could also you know, give the, oh no, it, 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 at this point we, we can't, we can't do a continuance, right, Carolyn? No. Uh, it, okay. I was going to say we could give the applicant more time. I didn't know, I didn't know what you just said about a, a, a two cease and desist and a failure to comply. I mean, it's like, I feel like we're trying to work with somebody who started building something and, and uh, wow. Yeah, I, I, so I, I think there should be a tight timeline because other measures apparently have not been respected. Um, well, it seems to me, here's, here's what I think, is that if, if, if this continues, there's going to, and, and we, we, grant, we can grant the permit, and if they continue uh, messing with, uh, with the provisions of zoning, then there will come a point where they'll have to remove the structure. And so... Well, yeah, arguably, that's what they have to do now. That's going to happen. That, so, yeah, but, no, that's what but, they but would we've have already to been do told. Now. Well, may I just briefly suggest an additional condition that I think could address the the board's concern? Which one? Kosher. I, I apologize, but one, it I, I did just get the chance to speak with Mr. Walling. Sixty days would be a much more realistic timeline to actually have this land in hand. These owners live out of state. We're he's trying, but two, uh, we would agree to a condition that no further work be performed at the property pending the appropriate resolution of the building inspectors uh, enforcement action. The reality of this situation is, is you had somebody proceeding without counsel, counsel's involved now, we're trying to patch things up here and make them right. I appreciate the board's concerns. But whatever conditions the board is, is willing to issue on this permit that would avoid that sort of, uh, I'm just going to use the word malfeasance that you're expressing, expressing concern about here, we would be happy to, to agree to. The, the, the goal for us is to work with the, with the city and resolve these concerns. What, what I was trying to say was that we could, we could give approval now. And then if things keep happening the way, the way they've happened down the road, our, you know, the structure will have to be, will be in violation anyway, you know? I mean, the, so- well, I guess the question for Carolyn- There's no is, sense in us. Oh, okay, go ahead. I guess the question for Carolyn is, are there any other conditions we could consider in that regard along the lines of what Bob is saying, or really is, is, the, is the, the appropriate condition with teeth to it to say, um, the, uh, you know, we grant the permit, but it's null and void if the property transfer doesn't occur within X days. I mean, I think you could put an end timeline and if you wanted to do 60 days, um, uh, you could do that and then um you know then basically the building then if there's further construction um you know that the building 
permit enforcement action will escalate. It won't be the 100 or the $500. It will be more than that. Um, but I think, you know, if you take um, the applicant's counsel at his word that they're going to rectify the situation, then if you put the 60 days in, I was suggesting 30 days because there hadn't been, yeah. you know, that was a tighter leash. I don't yeah. have, I don't have any particular, <laughs> you know, um, recommended course that it's, it can't be longer than 30 days. You know, that I was just sort of um, saying that that's a shorter timeline to really sort of get this done. Get right. this and, do, and, and do we have to recite, so I assume we don't have to recite an additional condition that no work shall proceed pending because that's true as a matter of right applicable they ordinance to, anyway right right i mean they really to have any work proceed they really have to pull a building permit and they can't do that until the zoning board permit has been recorded it's been um and the conservation and, and, and the conditions have been com, uh, you know complied with and they can't pull a building permit till they get a permit for the conservation commission right right okay. so um i think i think 60 days would be fine and you could just make it clear that if it doesn't happen within 60 days the permit's no longer valid That's so what about going back to our option to not hold a vote until the deed deed transfer is in place that was I what we were originally just considering, right? Yeah. So now that you've closed the hearing, there's a time clock ticking in which you have to issue a decision. And, and you can't hold off on a decision to get more information because your hearing right. is closed. Right. Right. So it really, at this point, I think you have to make a decision about what you're gonna do and put a condition in there. Um, because it really would be sort of a violation of due process by continuing a meeting and accepting yeah. public right. comment without, you know, even though you've already closed right. public hearing. Right. All right. So, um, I mean, we're trying to strike a balance here, working with the applicant, even though the, they're, you know, what's happened in the past is, is not, uh, is not, uh, was not correct. Um, so uh, I think I can, I think I can live with 60 days at, at Maureen and Bob. Or, or I'm I comfortable Bob with might... the, sh I'm comfortable with the shortest leash possible. That's also viable. Do you, you want it 30 days? You want... I, I would prefer 30 days. Yeah. Okay. And just in light of the, just the history. You know, I mean, knowing you even also, a week ago they were building, they were still working. The other thing is, even though you heard this out of public comment, <laughs> um, you could strike a balance and go halfway between 30 and 60. 45 days. Oh, oh, yeah. that's, uh, that, that's reasonable. I mean, if, that's more reasonable. If, I mean, I do yeah. real estate closings for a living. And if you can't close something in 45 days, there's something else going on. Um, but but I don't, but really the principle is, um, the, the, the principle is, is striking some kind of balance here. So yeah, I, I think, I think 45 days would work for me. Does that work for Maureen, you and, and Bob? Yep. Okay. Yep. I mean, we're, we're trying to work yeah. with people here. Um, so, um, So I guess we uh, are ready for a motion on the uh, application for the special permit um, subject to the condition that the permit, if granted, would be null and void if the applicant does not record the property transfer as shown in the ANR endorsed August 13, 2021, within 45 days of our decision. Somebody just want to move as... <laughs> I kind of, I'll, I'll make that motion. I'll make that motion. Okay, as stated, as I just stated. Okay, that's correct. Yeah. And I can second it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion or? Um, so we want a roll call. I guess yeah, roll call, please. Uh, Bob Riddle, how do you vote? 
um, I. Maureen Scanlon? For the process. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And David Bloomberg. Yeah. So um, I think, I don't think we have any other minutes or anything else on the agenda for tonight. Um, I had yep. something at 630. So our, I, if there's no other business, I could ask for a motion to adjourn. I know we have a, a hearing on the 28th, correct? Yes, mm -hmm. a continuation, yep. Or, sorry. Uh, I make a motion to adjourn. adjourn. And I'll uh, second. Sorry, it's the 23rd. Uh, Carolyn, is it? I'm showing the 23rd for that continuance. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, it's the 23rd. 23rd. Okay, good. Yep. okay and I think I heard a motion from Bob to adjourn. And second. A second from second. Maureen. And then a roll so, call. Bob Riddle. Aye. Uh, Maureen Scanlon. Yes. And David Bloomberg. Yeah. Okay. Yep. We're adjourned. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for your Good time. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.